Morgan Stanley came into this year as one of the most richly traded banks from a price to book basis. But the stock drop yep. you're seeing today is still the worst you've seen in October. So certainly a tough reception for Ted Pick over at Morgan Stanley on the first earnings out of the gate. Is there a line I can draw between what's happening at Morgan Stanley and what's happening at Goldman Sachs and what's happening at JP Morgan and what's happening at Citi? That's the bit that I'm struggling with. For the first time in quite a while, it feels like actually these banks are having their own stories to tell rather than trading, trading as a group. Now, they clearly do still trade as a group, but, but the differences are beginning to emerge a little bit more here. Oh, absolutely. And I'm glad you asked about the Goldman, J.P. Morgan, Morgan Stanley question. If you think, like Ted Pick has told me last year, that investment banking is going to lead the cycle, Goldman Sachs is coming in in number one in advisory. Yep. They inked more than a billion dollars in advisory fees last quarter alone in a bad market. And if you look at J.P. Morgan, the underwriting fees are starkly ahead of everybody else. Now, net interest income, you do have even JP Morgan, the biggest of the group, saying that they're generally going to be flat to a little bit higher on the year. Interesting about that outlook, it says that it incorporates six rate cuts. <laughs> and so if that doesn't happen, yeah. there's a big question on loan demand and whether you see that loan demand feeding in through the entire banking system at a time, Guy, where costs are under tremendous pressure. The only reason, the biggest reason rather, that Goldman came in less than everybody is because they cut so many jobs on the front end. So if you're seeing compensation costs yeah. go higher at these other banks, it begs the question on what the job story looks like this year. John, I want you to get your crystal ball out. Let's talk about what 2024 is going to look like. For the banking sector, for the KBW, is this going to be a year when the rate story determines hap what happens here? Is it going to be, if we see some stability, deal flow comes back, that's what's going to determine what happens here? Is it going to be a regulatory story with some big regulation coming straight down the pike towards us? What are going to be the defining features that determine whether this sector has a good 2024 or a not so good 2024? The macro, I would say, because if you think about it, the reason that the, the fixed income trading figures at many of these banks came in below expectations is the muting of volatility. And so those big Wall yep. Street engines are starting to sputter just a little bit because you're seeing volatility wane. And again, it all depends on how this year goes. If those rate cuts are contingent on a harder landing, you are already starting to hear that caution come in from every executive executives uh, mouths on whether things can get worse than expected because today we're in decent territory and clearly decent is not enough.